Back to my political masterminds now, Niall Gardner, former advisor to Margaret Thatcher. Your reaction to that confirmation that Boris has sacked the treacherous Michael Gove, according to a number 10 source there? Well, it's certainly been a brutal uh, 24 hours, and I expect you're going to see you know, potentially more sackings, more resignations from uh, ministers. Uh, but, you know, my view is that, you know, the, the damage done to to Britain's Conservatives uh, today uh, is immense, actually. And it makes no sense for a, you know, for a government where you have an over 80 seat majority to be forming some kind of circular firing squad here. Um, it, it just it just really, I think, defies the, you know, the expectations of the British people here. Nothing good, I think, will come from this. Uh, and I think it's a destructive path forward. The big winners, of course, from all of this will be on the left. And, you know, the Labour Party, the Liberals, the Scottish Nationalists are gloating. They're looking forward uh, to, uh, you know, taking on the Conservatives in a perhaps early general election. They're hoping for a victory. Many within those parties seek to reverse Brexit. This mm. is part of their agenda here, uh, without a doubt. And so I think the, the stakes are incredibly high here. Uh, and, you know, the path that the Conservatives are going down at the moment is hugely risky. It's destructive. It's a game of Russian uh, roulette. We don't know what the outcome uh, may be here. There are, you know, a multitude of potential contenders to replace Boris Johnson. Some of them are very strong. Some of them are, I would describe as being on, on the left wing of the party. It would be a huge mistake for the Conservatives to go back to the days of Theresa May or David Cameron or John Major. That that kind of leadership would be, uh, I think, fatal for the for the Conservatives. And you know, Boris Johnson mm. is a proven winner. Uh, he has demonstrated, you know, very strong leadership skills uh, with regard to delivering Brexit, uh, the 2016 referendum, that was a huge success. Also, the 2019 uh, general election victory is a huge success. So he is somebody with a track record of winning. And now the Conservatives may be taking a huge leap into the dark. I, I, I just have a sense of foreboding about what may happen mm. next year and also about the future of Brexit itself. Well, I'm with you there. But Maya Tusi, you say Boris has got to go. Why? Only, only in terms of logically, in a sense that at this point, it doesn't really matter who started the witch hunt or if there's a coup, uh, the battle is getting to the end. And it is a bit of a mess. And actually, I'll be honest, um, on paper, technically, Boris was, uh, had more of a chance to win compared to even the existing options in the cabinet or in a parliamentary party. But the reality is, compared to the even 2017 situation with Theresa May, uh, sorry, the 2019 situation with Theresa May, uh, that, was, that seemed more of a proactive uh, campaign to remove her because Boris Johnson was basically waiting uh, to uh, become the, the the main contender. This time, it's more reactive, and that's actually the danger for the Tory party because, on the one hand, I could say that, yeah, Boris, whether we like it or not, it's difficult now for him to stay and to get his act together mm -hmm. and you know, enough people to give top jobs to them and actual talent, but at the same time, there is no real alternative. You might say there are some good talents in the cabinet or in the, in the parliamentary party, but we, the Tory party are very always uh, cautious about uh, randomly giving chance to people. We don't elect your Ed Miliband or Jeremy mm. Corbyn. We you know, tend to, the Tory well, party tend to make sure that but, they but, know what but they Louis, do. But Louise Minch, isn't it just giving in to the political establishment and the MSM by giving up on Boris Johnson? And isn't it depressing to see so many of your fellow Tories do that? I hope maybe that he'll take the weekend to see if he can make this case to Conservative MPs and to the Conservative Party. Would we do well in a general election right now with Boris Johnson as leader? Even as his supporter, I'll tell you that the answer is no. But the Conservative Party wouldn't do well in an election that comes right now, no matter who is the leader. So my question is, how many of you want to lose your seat? The only way that we're going to do well in an election is if we have a small period of stable government. And if I were the Prime Minister, I'd offer to do a deal. I'd offer to resign at, let's say, the end of the year so I could finish up in my own way, but still have that stability. If he offers big tax cuts, if he, if he let Boris be Boris, maybe we will be able to recover. One thing's for sure, whoever leads the Conservative Party, if we have an election in the forthcoming future, the Conservative Party and the Conservative MPs are going to get thrashed. And I hope they remember that when the phones start buzzing over the weekend. Andrew Pearce, uh, where does the mail stand on this? You know, you've been a, a, a real Boris supporting newspaper in a strident editorial on Monday. 
you still said this is the best man to lead Britain and also the man most likely to stop that dreaded SNP, <laughs> Lib Dem, Labour, Green Alliance that Niall talks about. We are still backing him. And, we t and, and here's the point, Danny. What most politicians, presidents and prime ministers around the world think about what's going on in Britain today? Oh, what I know. Uh, prime minister will be brought down over a backbench MP nobody's ever heard of, over whether he did or he didn't uh, uh, get briefed about whether this guy had a drink problem or a groping problem. It's extraordinary. It's not Watergate, is it? It's not cash for honours. It's not cash for questions. It's a trivial, silly dispute which has been blown up out of all proportion. I don't think the prime minister and the number 10 machine has helped, but it is astonishing. But this man who had an 80-seat majority barely two and a half years ago is being for potentially forced out over a backbencher in a few weeks' time we'll all have forgotten all about and not soon enough. So, Alex Dean, you know, you're a former Conservative advisor. What is the path out here? If you were in number 10 and in the number 10 bunker with Boris Johnson tonight, what would you be advising him if you were trying to find a way for him to stay in power? Well, he's got to say, I'm going to stay on and fight. And if you want to have a vote, let's have a vote and I'll win it. And then he's got to seek to do as much as he can to persuade the members of his parliamentary party that he's active, that he's not just passive and waiting for events to happen to him, but that he's got a, a plan and that he's going to act upon it. The trouble for him, for genuine Conservatives, is they'll say, well, if you're going to have tax cuts, why haven't we had them already? If we were going to have a true Conservative agenda, why haven't we had more of it? To which the Prime Minister's answer well, there was this coronavirus epidemic, is, um, is a partial answer, but doesn't completely answer the concerns that people had. On the other hand, the rebels are so diffuse, you know, that everything from uh, tax cutting small state free marketeers who think this government's not conservative enough, through red wallers who want more levelling up support and fund state funds, through to the traditional left of the Tory party, which still exists and might rally around Jeremy Hunt, uh, you know, people who mm -hmm. basically never accepted that Brexit yeah. uh, happened. Those people are so diffuse in their interests that uh, they're going to find it very difficult to coalesce around one single figure. So the other thing that Boris Johnson and his supporters are going to do is say, if not me, then who? It's not good enough just to try and sling Boris out. You've got to say who's going to lead our country. And so on that, if, first of all, it's very hard to beat somebody with nobody. They're going to have to try and rally around an individual. And secondly, there's a process that goes with that if you do want that. Uh, change. It's going to take months. A Tory leadership election right now over a long, hot summer would involve upwards of 10, 12 candidates. Uh, they have to get whittled down one by one. And I think number 10 is totally within its rights to say what chaos that would be just when we need leadership the most. If you think stability is absent now, you ain't seen nothing yet. Boy, oh boy, absolutely. Well, fascinating analysis there from all of my political masterminds. That was Alex Dean, the Conservative commentator, also joined by former Tory MP Louise Mensch, former advisor to Margaret Thatcher, Niall Garner, the Daily Mail political columnist and consultant editor Andrew Pearce, and the political YouTuber Maya Tusi. So who do you agree with? Does the Tory party have more chance of winning the next election with Boris Johnson as PM?